First, I want to stand up and wave and cheer your supportive family and friends. Thank you, I'm sure you can find them out there. Show your love. It's a great honor for me to be here today. Now wait a second. I know that's such a cliche. You're thinking every graduation speaker here says that. It's a great honor. But in my case, it really is deeply true. Uh, but in my case, it really is deeply true. Being here is more special and more personal than most of you know. I'd like to tell you why. Long time ago, there is a long time ago in this September, in this cold September, 1962, there is a Stevens Cup. There is a Stevens Cup at at the very this university. The cup had a kitchen with a ceiling that had been cleaned by uh, student volunteers, probably every decade or so. Picture a college girl named Gloria climbing up high on the ladder, struggling to clean the filthy ceiling. Standing on the floor, a young boy named Carl was admiring the view. And, uh, how they, and that's how they met. They were my parents. So I suppose you could say, I'm the direct result of a kitchen and chemistry experiment. My mom is here with us today and we should probably go find a spot to put up a plaque on the ceiling that says, thanks mom and dad. My dad, my dad got actually a quantity discount. He got a three and a half of his degrees here. Uh, his PhD was communication science because they thought computers were just passing, just passing fad for, just passing fad in when he earned it 44, uh, uh, 43, 43 years ago. Uh, he and mom made a big sacrifice for that degree. They are, they argue, they argue at the time over pennies while raising my newborn brother. <clears throat> my mom types my dad's dissertation by hand The kind of ironic given it was computer science dissertation. The velvet hood that I'm wearing, this is my dad's. This diploma, yeah. This is the diploma that I have here, just like the one you're about to get. This is my dad's. And my underwear, oh, never mind, sorry. My father's father worked in Chevy plant in Flint, Michigan. He was an assembly line worker. He drove his two children here to another and told them, this is where you're going to college. I know it sounds funny now. Both of his kids actually did graduate from Michigan. That was the American dream. His daughter, his daughter Beverly is also with us today. He used to carry an audio hammer. He used uh, he used to carry an audio hammer. Uh, that is a, a heavy iron pipe with a, with a big hunk of lead melted on the end. Workers made them workers made them during a sit-down strike to protect themselves. When I was growing up, we used the hammer uh, whenever we needed to pound a stake or something into the yard. It is wonderful that people don't need to carry, carry a big blunt object for protection anymore. But just in case, I brought it with me. All right. My dad became a professor at Michigan State, and I was an incredibly lucky boy. Professor's life was pretty flexible. He was able to spend 
oodles of Thai resume. Could there be any a better upbringing than university brats? It is easy. Um, it is not a. It is not a easy for me uh, to proud how. It is not a easy for me uh, to be here. It is not a easy for me uh, how proud I am to be here with my mom, my brother, and Lucy, and with all of you. At this, uh, at this amazing institution that is responsible for my very existence. I'm serious for all of you, and I'm serious for all of your family and friends, as some of you joined at this great big Michigan family. I feel I've been a part of all of my life. Um, I'm trying to tell you this is way more than I'm trying to tell you this is way more than homecoming for me. <coughs> uh, what I'm trying to tell you is I know exactly what it feels like to be sitting and listening. Uh, what I'm most trying to tell you is I know exactly what it feels like to be sitting in your seat listening some old gas bag give a long-winded commencement speech. Don't worry, I'll be brief. I have a story about following dreams, or more accurately, it's a story about finding a path to make dreams real, to make those dreams real. I know it sounds funny. You know what it's feel. You know what it's like. You know what it's feel like. You know what it feels like. You know what it feels like to wake up in the middle of the night with a vivid dream. And you know how if you don't have a pen and and uh, you know how if you don't have a pencil and uh, pad by the bed, um, it will completely it will completely gone by the next morning. I have one of those dreams. I have one of those dreams uh, when I was 23. When I suddenly woke up, I was thinking, what if we could download the web and uh, just uh, keep the link? And I grab and I grab the pen and uh, started writing. Still? Sometimes it's important to wake up and uh, stop dreaming. I spend the middle of the night scribbling at. I spend the middle of the night scribbling, scribbling at, I spend the middle of the night scribbling, scribbling the details and convincing myself it would work okay. Soon after, uh, soon after, I told my advisor, "Tell me when grad. It would take much. It would take. It would take a couple of weeks for me to download the web." He nodded knowingly, fully aware it would take much longer to download the web, but wise enough not to tell me. The use of the the optimism of use of an. The optimism of use is often underrated. Amazingly, at the time, uh, I have no thought of building a search engine. This idea was even on the radar, but much later, uh, we happened. Uh, but much later, we happened a better way of ranking. And uh, uh, made a and uh, made a and uh, made a really great search engine, and Google was born. When a really great team shows up, drop it.
when I was here at Michigan, when I was here at Michigan, um, I was actually, when I was here at Michigan, um, um, uh, I was actually being taught how to make dreams real. I know that sounds, uh, I know that's completely nuts, but uh, this is what I learned in summer camp, converted into this training program called Leadership. Yeah, we got a few out there. The slogan is to have a healthy disregard for the impossible. They encouraged me to pursue a crazy idea at the time. I wanted to build a rapid personal transit system on campus to replace the buses. Yeah, you're still working on that right here. It was a futuristic way of solving our transportation problem. I still think a lot about transportation. You never lose a dream. It just incubates as a hobby. Um, many things, many things, People labor hard too now, like cooking, cleaning, and uh, driving will require much less human time in the future. That is if you have a healthy disregard for the impossible. And uh, actually build the solutions. What is what I learned, uh, what is one of what is one of summary? Uh, what is one? What is one sentence summary of how you change the world? Always work hard. Always work hard. Uh, always work hard. On um, something uncomfortably and uh, exciting. And actually build the solutions. As a PhD student had three projects I wanted to do work on. I think it's good advice. Uh, thanks good thanks good advice. Um, my advisor said. Thanks thanks goodness my advisor said, why don't you work for why don't you work for, why don't you work on the web for a while? He gave me some seriously good advice. For, uh, he gave me some good. He gave me some seriously good advice for me, um, because um, the computers were there. The web was growing. The web was growing with people and activity, even in 1995. Technology, and especially internet, can solve. Internet can. Technology and the internet can uh, really help you be lazy. Lazy? Uh, what I learn, uh, what I mean, lazy, what I mean as a, three, as a group of three people can write software that 10 millions can use and enjoy. Can 10 millions, can three people answer for a million times? Find the leverage in the world so you can be truly lazy. <clears throat> Overall, overall, I know. Overall, uh, I know it seems like the world is crumbling out there. It's a really great time. It's a really great time to get a little crazy follow your curiosity, and be ambitious about it. Don't give up on your dream. The world needs your own. Uh. Okay, um, back to the, back to the one story.
uh, you know, you are you are probably on the right track. If you have a, you are probably on the right track. You are probably on the right track. If you have a, you are you are probably, uh, you are probably on the right track. You are probably on the right track. You are probably on the right track. If you are sidewalk warm during a rainstorm. And that's and that's how we feel about. Uh, after we maxed out three credit cards, buying hard disks of the back of the trunk. That's actually, that, uh, that's actually for the first software for Google. Parents and friends, more credit cards always help. Yeah. You are uh, We didn't almost start Google actually because my co-father said again I were too worried about too worried about uh, dropping out of PhD program. Uh, none of you, none of you, uh, none of you, none of you, none of you has, none of you have that issue. It seems you're probably on the right track if you feel like a sidewalk worm during a rainstorm. Uh, that's and that's how that's how we felt after we maxed out three credit cards buying a hard disk of the back of the trunk. It's 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 just it's just for it just it's just first software for Google. Parents and friends, technology, uh, parents and friends, and uh, parents and friends, and uh, more credit cards always help. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, it's not easy to make a. It's not easy to make a big progress or make ambitious dreams. I know that's such, I know that's completely nuts. But since no one else is, but since no one else is crazy enough to do it, you have you have little competition. In in fact, there are a few people this crazy, um, but I feel like I know them all by first name. The best people work. Um, the best people work. The best people work. The best people work on the big challenges. They tr they are trouble as if they were pack dogs, and they stick to each other. Like glue. Uh, they work on they uh, they want to work on the best people want to work on big the big challenges. That's what happened with Google. Our mission is organize the world information and technology. Uh, to make it universally accessible and useful. How can Dan not get excited? <laughs> 